Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Welcome to the uh, distinguished audience and my fellow panelists. Uh, first of all, a big thank you to EQ for arranging this timely conference, which brings together the UAE solar industry, I would say, at a very relevant and uh, momentous time. Especially for UAE, these are very interesting times. The demand for solar energy is at its peak, especially after the slowdown during the pandemic and also some of the recent changes in regulations. So you can see that the demand for projects, the demand for projects to move ahead is almost peaking. At the same time, the, the lot of challenges which are also there in the market. I think we heard from a lot of our fellow panelists during the morning time about the various challenges that they foresee and uh, also about some of the mitigation plans that they have, especially for the utility scale. In this session, we will be focusing more on the CNI and uh, hopefully some of the residential space. The uh, continuing the solar energy uh, implementation, the decarbonization of the economy, etc., are very top priorities for most governments and especially true for UAE, where there are stated targets for decarbonizing and for achieving net zero. And the, the continuing growth of this industry, especially the distributed solar space, is essential for achieving these targets. Now, while demand is at its peak, we also see many challenges, especially on the commodity prices due to the, uh, the pandemic slowdowns and lockdowns. The, the issues of uh, the recent war between Russia and Ukraine, the commodity prices and raw material prices are at, at its peak, along with the challenges in the supply chain. All of this is leading to some kind of a perfect storm where you have excellent demand, but at the same time you have challenges in, in meeting this demand. The government regulations also are at different pace, I would say, in different markets around the region. Some of them are moving faster, some have very good role models, some still haven't come to the party. So you have a lot of different pace at which different government regulations are moving, which also creates opportunities for the early movers in certain markets, because you can go and position yourself very well uh, in time for the, the outlook to get favorable. We will explore both the demand side opportunities and the challenges and possible mitigations during this panel discussion. So in this distinguished panel, we have solar developers, we have EPC companies, consultant firms, and technology developers. I welcome all the panel members, and we will try to provide an interesting and insightful session here. First, we will do a quick round of introductions. I'll start with uh, myself. I am Manoj Divakaran, Managing Director of Imperial Energy and Services. Imperial is a research and development company in the solar thermal, CSP, and water desalination space. We also do a lot of EPC work, design and EPC work in the solar PV space. We have done over 600 megawatts of solar PV and around 130 megawatt plus of uh, CSP projects. And we have a special focus on architectural solar and BIPV. So with this, I will ask my fellow panel members to quickly uh, introduce themselves. I'll just do a uh, round the table. Yeah, hello. Thanks, thanks, Manoj, for agreeing to moderate the session. Uh, my name is Rahul. I represent Voltas. Voltas is a part of the Tata Group from India uh, and is one of the largest MEP contractors in the region. We have some of the most marquee, marquee projects in the region that we have done as a MEP contractor like uh, the Burj Khalifa, for instance. Uh, we have also diversified into water, uh, biogas. We have done the first biogas plant in Oman for Mazoon Dairy. Uh, so as part of the diversification strategy, we have also uh, ventured into solar projects. We recently set up this division, uh, and we are offering EPC services for utility as well as CNI scale customers uh, in the GCC region. Thanks. Hi, thanks, uh, Manoj, for the initial introduction. I'm Vivek Nair, uh, co-founder and managing director of Galactic Energy Consult Consultants. We are a newly uh, uh, developed consultants in Dubai South. Uh, we majorly focus on renewable energy. 
Uh, we work uh, in the solar PV projects in the rooftop markets in Dubai. Um, we, our major focus uh, is to work with, on projects with clients, advise them, provide technical advice on solar PV projects, make sure that uh, we do the right advice for them. Uh, also involved in feasibility studies uh, for, for the clients, technical design, and project management services. So, um, yeah, I mean, we, we started a couple of months ago. Uh, we are doing uh, a decent amount of project uh, in the Middle East. Presently, we are involved. Um, and uh, great to have in this panel. Yep. <coughs> Thank you very much, Manoj. Myself, Amit Singh, I am from uh, CleanMax. Uh, CleanMax is a renewable energy company and we are one of the leading developers. Our presence is in India, Southeast Asia and Middle East Asia. Altogether, till date, we have executed one gigawatt of project that is utility scale and uh, rooftop scale. In Dubai, we started business around four years back and uh, till date, our capacity is around 40 megawatt plus in a rooftop project. We generally focus on a OPEX uh, model and uh, do the project on a boot, uh, boot basis. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rami Ilyas from uh, Rolls-Royce Sustainable Solution. Uh, we are actually uh, covering the microgrid uh, space in uh, Middle East and Africa. And our focus is to provide our customer like a complete solution uh, starting from the initial study and how to optimize a microgrid, whether it's off-grid or on-grid, with our uh, complete portfolio, starting from diesel gas genset and uh, crossing to battery energy storage, fuel cell, and electrolyzer as well. So actually, it's like our main role is to uh, do a complete study for uh, whatever project that come up in the region, whether it's on-grid or off-grid, and optimize the LCE model to the lowest uh, minimal uh, possible uh, uh, tariffs and achieve the best experience for our client. That's it, thank you. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Sham. I'm the founder and managing director of Klenogize Consultants. Uh, we've been around for the last six years and we've done about 650 megawatts in this specific region. We do solar energy, specifically commercial and industrial. And we advise clients all the way from feasibilities to financial models to engineering, uh, supervision of projects and maintenance. Recently, we've started two new divisions, one focusing on energy efficiency to make existing buildings more efficient because it goes hand in hand with solar and a sustainability division to start making carbon footprint assessments and sustainability reports for clients. So yeah, that's, that's us. We have offices in Dubai, Bahrain, Saudi and in Europe as well. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mohammed Abu Hilal, I'm the CEO of Suns Energy Group. Uh, basically, we focus on project development globally. We are based in Dubai for the past seven years. Uh, we've been developing projects in Africa, uh, Middle East, and uh, currently USA as well and Europe. Uh, we focus primarily on project development, and we try to connect the dots between the different elements of the projects to make it a successful conclusion between the, the procurement side from the vendors and suppliers to keep for the market on all levels, on the small home all the way to the utility scale projects. So our primary focus is project development. Thank you all for the quick introduction. Let's start with the market outlook from the panelists. What are the growth areas for the solar sector in UAE from your company's perspective? And what are you doing to accelerate the adoption of solar? If we can stick specifically to the CNI sector, that would be, that's more relevant for our discussion. But specifically, if you could say from your company's perspective, what's your outlook for solar in UAE? And uh, what are you doing as a company to uh, accelerate the adoption of solar in UAE? If I can start with you, Mohammed. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, you know, in the UAE, it's a market that grows very fast. <laughs> it has its challenges, ups and downs. So in our work, we did not, uh, when we entered into this business, uh, this is close to 10 years now, we did not think about uh, 
the economic sides of it or the costing or the pricing or anything like that. We were focusing on bringing uh, passion into this uh, energy that is a clean source for people where everybody can use it, whether it's a small home, like I said, or over to the utility scale. That was our main focus uh, initially, to educate people more about solar energy, uh, meet the challenges that are in Dubai. Initially, of course, you know, the, um, regarding, for example, in, in the UAE itself, it's not one uh, like state that you focus on. You have to work in Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Sharjah, Ajman, and each state has its own regulation, its own set of rules that you have to abide by. So these, these kind of uh, challenges that are happening in the UAE in general uh, took us to find new solutions for people, maybe going off grid in some cases, maybe try to help uh, you know, changing the generator sides into solar plus batteries plus generators in case there is some lapse in between. So being creative in this business is very important. Uh, looking at the need of the people, where, where they are hurting. Nowadays, of course, cost of electricity is rising and everybody is turning into clean energy. So we are on the upside now, I think, of things and hopefully it will grow more and more, I, I believe, because of uh, the overall situation changes in the world, which is very unpredictable, what could happen next. So I think in the UAE, I can see a very good uh, growth to the market, even it's full of companies, sorry to say that, or, <laughs> that are building solar, but uh, not everybody uh, is uh, probably as qualified, and my colleague here, I, I've known him for a few years in some conferences we met together, they go after benchmarking of these EPC partners that can do the installation, commissioning, integration of the system, whether it's on grid or not. And they do a very good job, by the way, and I, I do recommend them as a company. So this is from my side. Thank you, Mohammed. Sham, can you give us a view from a consultant perspective? Because you get to see things developing in the market maybe ahead of most other people. Look, there was a lot of enthusiasm when it started. We've hit our numbers already. UA is a success story, so it's not a focus market for most companies here. I think everybody got the message pretty clear last year. You've got to look outside and you've got to look fast because when you have companies who have built up 50, 80, 100 employees for an EPC in Dubai where the market size now has stagnated, you have to go out. Uh, so if you ask me specifically to UAE, uh, one can probably look at Abu Dhabi uh, and one can look at Alain specifically, Sharjah, there's no policy, we're waiting for it to come out. So I'll, I like to go on the specifics of it, and you have to state the truth where it is. So if there are no prevalent, easy projects in the Northern Emirates and Sharjah, uh, one has to start looking out. Bahrain and Saudi are very attractive. Policies are active there. People are already doing projects there. But if one specifically wants to restrict themselves to UAE, you better be driving to Abu Dhabi and Alain and picking up those semi-governmental projects, which are now the 6, 8, 10 mega, which we are seeing now. So to answer in, in, in brief, uh, we've picked up a lot of government, semi-government projects with exactly in the 5 to 10 mega category who've been given a mandate by the government to go solar in Alain and Abu Dhabi. The challenge now is to get the hourly profiles because they don't have net metering and you need to size the plant according to the consumption of the client. So interesting market UAE, uh, limited to probably Abu Dhabi and Alain. Dubai, whatever has happened, there is still a momentous effect. So the snowball is still rolling. It's not getting bigger, but it has to go and has to get deployed. So for us, at least about 5,200 megawatts gets deployed in the next eight to 12 months. Thanks, Sham. Do you see uh, the new areas like the mobility solutions, green hydrogen, et cetera, playing a role? They do play a role, but the target market and the stakeholders in that discussion are so large that I, I doubt people at our level, unless you bring in the big boys over here, are playing some active role in it. Green hydrogen, yes. I wonder how a consulting firm of eight to 10 people or an EPC of 50, 100 employees would do anything in the value chain until they've not done their job. Mm -hmm. So yes, I'm actually on the receiving side to see some good work there so we can pivot and start offering services there. But on the learning side, not on the talking side yet on that. Okay, thank you. Rami, your views? You're more of a holistic technology provider in this space. Yeah, sure. For definitely, uh, UAE market is, uh, is definitely more promising in the utility scale. It's still on, on, in the rooftop, or let's say, let's nom like 
nominated as distributed energy solution is still, let, let's say like Saudi is definitely leading here or Egypt is like more, uh, it's like they are more active market and we are missing a, a bit of uh, expanding the regulation in, 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 in some sense. Uh, as Rolls-Royce, we are uh, working on different uh, projects uh, here in UAE uh, in the off-grid uh, market, and we are not only promoting for the solar part of it, we are promoting of integrated, integrating a complete solution with uh, battery uh, solution and uh, uh, PV and diesel uh, engine as well. Still the hydrogen, we have a hydrogen fuel cell, it's like developed under Rolls-Royce, we have electrolyzer, but it's still it's not, uh, let's say, we don't have the infrastructure in UAE to start discussing uh, those kind of solution. It's this, the, those kind of discussion started in Saudi and the infrastructure is about to be ready with after new home construction. So uh, yeah, this is more or less uh, the outlook, yeah. Thank you. Amit, we'd like to hear a developer's perspective of what are you doing to accelerate? Because you mentioned that last year you did almost 20 megawatts in the CNI space. Is your outlook better for this year? Are you doing something to accelerate that option? Yeah, sure. So regarding this, uh, Dubai, uh, there is an exponential growth in the uh, Dubai market. And a study says that by next 2030, the grid requirement will be doubled, doubled wherever we are now. Seeing that a lot of industries are already uh, started the business here in Dubai and many industries are coming up, especially the warehouses. So we have big, big roofs and we can install a uh, good capacity of the project. But the, if I consider the challenges in three categories, number one, climatic, number two, operational, and number three, government regulations. If we see climatic, yeah, uh, Dubai is some bond of more uh, humid, high temperature, dust, that is a God grace, means we have to bear with that. But to uh, cover the risk of all these, we have to think about uh, the operation and maintenance of these plants, like implementation, for example, is 100% of the robotics, so that the cleaning can be done on a properly. Second challenge was the operational. Uh, as a developer, we have seen many of the end users, which we say as a clients, not having the sufficient infrastructure. It means the uh, electrical connections or the, uh, what we say, the electrical room, the buildings where we have to install the solar is not up to the mark, means quality is not up to the mark where directly we can go and install the solars. So it needs certain rectification, upgradation, that's on, it takes time. So that also has to be, uh, you know, a, one of the factor which is restrict the installation of the solars. Third one is the government regulations. Like as a developer, last year, as I mentioned, that 20 plus megawatt we did. But suddenly, last two, month, two three months, this change in the DEVA policies, it's drastically means uh, impacted over all the rooftop business. Uh, just an example, if I tell, we have signed few of the PPAs with a capacity of more than 2 megawatt. And the, due to the change in regulations, the capacity has reduced to around 500 to 600 kilowatt. So that's uh, one of the key things that uh, I request government authorities to reconsider in that. Because as of now, we cannot install more than 1 megawatt at any point. Earlier, that limit was not there. So that is the challenges we are facing in a, a rooftop sector. And second one, we are focusing on a, a commercial and industrial. I uh, say we should also focus on a residential sector also because it, it also has a good opportunities. Thanks. Thank you. Vivek? Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, Manoj, from my experience uh, in the last seven years, uh, based on the Inashams Dubai regulation, well, the regulation was written for small scale power plants. Uh, we all know that. and. Uh, there has been, I mean, it's written that there might be a gap in a time. So we initially, when, like, let's say seven years ago, when the regulation came in, uh, the, the tough point was the price for the commodities. At that time, let's say the panel was $1 plus. And, uh, you know, the, the difficulty in educating the clients uh, for solar. So uh, the receipt from the client initially was very tough. So we went through a phase where that was a challenge. And then we, we you know, developed projects and the market slowly, you know, the gain momentum. I personally have installed around 25 or 30 megawatt 
uh, power plants uh, in, in, in the medium scale on the CIN sector in Dubai. So we saw a rapid growth and the growth uh, exponentially increased and then presently what we see is a stabilizing in the market. So um, yes, regulations have changed. We have seen regulations change two years ago. We all came into the cubicle of two mega and uh, recently it has come to, I mean, we can't have the numbers now, but in the range of five mega to one mega. So uh, I see this, I mean, for sure, people have been shattered. <laughs> uh, you know, we have lost business, we have signed uh, contracts, but uh, it's a stabilizing stage where we see, as Galactic, we are seeing a good receipt from the clients. Clients see that solar, I mean, they know that solar is, is working out. It gives you the, uh, the payback and there is more interest. So we, uh, I mean, we, in, in the last couple of months, we have been really busy with the clients. Uh, on a smaller scale, we have been try, uh, trying to negotiate and you know, sign contracts in the range of five megawatt peak. So there is still interest. Uh, it's about, uh, I mean, yeah, ma mainly from the stabilizing point of view, I mean, we, we have to look at the distribution side of the, of the network itself. I mean, the network engineers, uh, from the utility companies, they look at the penetration of solar, and that, that has been also a, a concern. So I believe that, yes, it's a challenging time, but there are potential. It gives more clients a chance to have solar uh, installed on their rooftop or in their facility. And uh, with the, uh, I, mean, I think it's, it's a 10-year period. Every 10 years, you know, the market changes itself. So hopefully, with the infrastructure development in the distribution network, uh, we should see more solar or relaxation in the policies. So I'm a firm believer that uh, you know, Dubai should pick up and the other Emirates should follow, but maybe you know, on the uh, smaller scale, understanding that uh, uh, you know, the Shams Dubai regulation or Shams Dubai program is on a smaller scale projects. Yeah. Thanks, Vivek. So overall, I'm seeing a lot of optimism in spite of all the challenges. So Rahul, your views? Uh, so my my views are perhaps because electricity is a regulated you know subject globally, not just in the Middle East. We will always see ups and downs. This happens. I think many veterans in the audience can also attest to this fact that we will see ups and downs in any geography, especially in the solar market. Uh, but what is important to realize is uh, there is now let's say a demand from customers, clients, as well as some global frameworks under WTO being developed, which will force carbon pricing on any manufacturer. So uh, this will force governments to realign their policies to attract investment, to attract manufacturers, to make sure that they are competitive. For example, we are already seeing in Europe having introduced a carbon border adjustment tax uh, we see, which will be applicable to aluminium producers globally, cement producers, fertilizer producers globally, importing their products into Europe. They will also now be forced to pay a carbon tax if they are not consuming clean energy. So this is actually forcing a lot of aluminium producers in Bahrain and UAE to come up with large solar tenders, uh, large solar project opportunities. So this is just on Europe. So similarly, under the Paris Framework Agreement under WTO, uh, when hopefully soon something comes up, I don't know what the timelines are, one year, two year, five years, that will force governments to also reassess and realign their uh, policies to make, that, uh, make sure that manufacturers or consumers are free to choose their source of electricity, uh, consume more clean energy if they wish to remain more competitive because ultimately carbon has a cost which right now is not being captured. Uh, so that's why, that's one of the reasons I believe going forward the industry will uh, expand. Uh, talking about right now, some of the areas that we are seeing, obviously, uh, like Sham mentioned, Alain Abu Dhabi, that is the reason, uh, region. But we are also seeing some, let's say, big mines in Fujaira currently working on diesel, uh, running 10 MVA diesel gensets, paying 4 uh, dirhams per liter. Uh, because they are waiting for favors, electrical connections for the last two years and they are still not sure whether it will come. So that is an interesting problem uh, that solar can address uh, through hybrid solutions. Another uh, area which we as a company are investigating, everyone is talking about green hydrogen, yes, uh, but there are, uh, there is a potential to also decentralize uh, green hydrogen. Obviously people are talking about 300, 400 megawatts 
in green hydrogen, but we are also looking at opportunities to also have smaller modular packets uh, to not, um, for not for very large consumers, but for let's say smaller consumers who are consuming ammonia, who are consuming hydrogen as a raw product to maybe offer a green alternative. So that's also an interesting area which we are exploring, not just in UAE, but also in Oman, but also in Bahrain. Thank you. Thanks, Rahul. It's a very interesting point you raised there about not only electricity, but the carbon certificates and the carbon markets also contributing to driving the adoption of solar. I'd like to bring the focus back to financing of projects. Do you see any evolution in the financial models being used in the CNI segment? Uh, currently in the PPA uh, markets, in the GCC and UAE markets, do you see any further evolution, any new models of uh, financing coming out? Are banks going to pay a, play a role? Again, can I ask uh, Amit to pick it up first and then I'll maybe ask others as well. <coughs> Yeah, you rightly said uh, regarding these financial models. Uh, yeah, banks are playing an important role, but uh, if you see in a UAE market, that's not come to the stage where banks are seeing this as an opportunity. It's on a very nascent stage, and uh, you know the lenders and investors have to come up with certain framework and the policies so that it can be seen as an opportunity and also as a green initiative because this is something not uh, commercial, this is something we are contributing to the uh, green also. Second, regarding the policies, uh, on a financial policies like Dubai, okay fine, that is something we are having but the nearby Emirates like the Abu Dhabi, Sharjah, we don't have any policies. So rooftop is still struggling to come up in these uh, Emirates where a policies framework, financial models, and uh, many other, you know, work has to be done to uh, to get a solar up to a certain level, which uh, at present the Dubai is doing. Okay, thanks, Mohammed. Would you like to add a few points about the evolving financial for, models? For the fin yes, sure. Um, we have to go back to basics uh, when we talk about financing which segment we want to finance for, basically. I'm just yeah, yeah. speaking out loud. Uh, so basically, when you come to financial model that fits the homeowners or the villa levels or house level, this is one sector. Uh, when you're talking about factories or CNDI, for example, this is another level. When you talk about utility scale, then you are upgrading the level of financing that you need. So basically, we have to go to each segment and try to cater for the segment. Bank are very willing to get into this. I have very good access to, to these type of banks that are willing to come in and put the funds necessary to finance over three years, five years, or more if it's a utility scale project. So this type of, of, of financing model or business model must cater for the need at the, uh, that particular country or area. I don't take UAE as the only country in the world. UAE is a very good model of how growth potential is going and how this uh, solar energy business or clean energy business is growing in this country. But I take the UAE or Dubai, Dubai in particular as now becoming the hub for solar energy supplies, equipment for I, at, at least for the region, which include Africa and part of the Middle East, uh, most of the Middle East, and now even to the US and South America as well. So Dubai becoming, in a way, more of a, a global player in this uh, building new financial models, new uh, business model that will make this type of solution as, uh, uh, as successful to the segment that you want to target. So uh, there are now some banks who are approaching me that they want to do basically, for example, retail financing for the supplies. So when you talk about solar uh, for the villa, you need, if it's on grid or off grid, of course, you have different category of equipment that you would require, but they would definitely finance the supply over three or five years model, which make it affordable for the end user. So this is where we have to focus the financial model that fits the need of the customer, 
whether it is a factory owner that he needs to build the solar system, uh, as my colleague from Rolls Royce, they are building an independent power plant basically or microgrid solution, or on the utility scale for the country to cater for a village or a city or part of a city. So definitely the banks are there. Maybe they're not known to everybody for sure, but uh, they are there and they are also uh, ready to uh, prepare these funds. From my experience four years ago or five years ago, there was even uh, uh, a fund from a French bank of about $60 million that was provided for Jordan. Unfortunately, the bank that took that fund in to, to help the people with it, they did not advertise enough or market enough the availability of this financing to the, you know, the, the level of the homes or, or even the factory. So we have to analyze the market well in the UAE, where is the need and what is exactly the requirement of the uh, customer, uh, and then what, what kind of financing they need. Most of the time, uh, it's already been done in, in Dubai that the people get the financing from the developer or the APC partner. They will bring in the financing, they will do the projects, and they will share the profit of the uh, benefit of the solar production on a 50-50 range, plus or minus some you know, decimals there. But in, in reality, finances is available quite well, even for the UE specifically, because there are so many funds coming from Europe, from different uh, regions, to help in this, uh, in this part. So I, there is, but we need to basically uh, show it more to the people. And this type of events, thanking to EQ, of course, <laughs> for this, would, would definitely educate the people. Because a lot of people in Dubai, maybe you realize that, that they're a little bit not knowledgeable about what's available. <laughs> and you have these uh, different companies marketing different percentages of benefit, 40%, 30%, 50%. So you have the game of playing the numbers. Uh, we hope this will improve by, as, as the, the market becoming more competitive now in the UAE. But definitely there should be a look for the people that are coming from outside to seek the knowledge and the experience that is in the UAE. And this is a huge market that can be captured as well. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Mama. That's quite uh, encouraging.